morning guys, G2P Angler here, Jason Reese. We are early May, heading out of Hillsboro Inlet. Got with me for his last day on his trip, David Reese, my dad. <laughs> uh, it's been great out here, so it, it is, it's great when you get the visit from the, from the parental unit, but also just to enjoy the day out here on the water with your dad. That's the, that's the good stuff. So the seaweed's been terrible, and it's been rough. We haven't been out the last couple of days, and we're hoping that conditions are better today. They're forecast to be, but the seaweed's still like the big question mark. So um, we're hoping to troll, and we might try to drop some bottom lines if the seaweed's impossible to keep clear off of the trolling line. So uh, to start on the spread going out, we're gonna use this uh, rattle jet on one of the outriggers, a little squiddy rattle jet. This Islander Squiddy combo that I got a real deal uh, tackle shop here in Pompano has been crushing it. They should have a market with these. So that's been great for sailfish and tuna. And then we're going to do uh, a DX, uh, DXT Minnow 200 closest to the boat. We have a four sticks planer with a uh, half ounce pink and white sea witch going out on the, uh, on the planer. And then we're going to have uh, one pink tuna taco going out on the other outrigger. So that's what we're getting into today. Hopefully there's uh, no seaweed. We can get some trolling done and we're hoping to get uh, a couple of fish crossed off my dad's list while he's here. Hopefully a wahoo and maybe even a grouper since the season opened up here. So wish us luck. Thanks for watching and hopefully we're hooked up soon. I'm gonna slow down a little bit. All right, we're 100 and, and 140 feet of water, coming through a weed line here, north of Hillsboro. A lot of weed out here. Wait, wait, wait let, me, let, me, let me turn the alarm off, Pop. You can put it in the gunnel if you want, just until you get the planer in. And then fight it, fight it until you get the uh, the planer out, and then we'll, then you can pull it out of the gunnel. Keep going. No, I, I think there is. That was our first bite. We've been trolling for about a half an hour and there is a lot of weeds, but it looks like some of this could form into a weed line as the day goes on. So it might wind up being an okay situation for us. And not too rough, you know, one to two out here like predicted. So my dad's last day, we're gonna, we're gonna work hard today for these bites. And we're gonna try to do everything we can to get them on some fish, okay? All right, now pick it up, out of there. Okay, pull it back, bring the line down here to me. Stop reeling. Yeah, he's on. Not a huge one, but we'll, we'll get the, uh, get the skunk stink off of the boat early. Just reel it straight in. You don't need to. You don't even need to pump it. Just reel it straight in. There you go. You're doing great. I think you're under it. Yeah, you're under it. So this one's on the planer. Might be a king. It looks it looks it looks long. Yeah, yeah, bring, yeah. Bring it up to your. Bring it up to your left here. Yeah, it's a king. A little more, a little more, a little more. Stop. All right, job pop. All right, we're we're on the board. We got one in. Let's get it up to trolling speed. So 140 for the king. So 165 north of Boca Inlet. 848, we've been going for a while, no bites, trying to avoid seaweed here. And the uh, shotgun got picked up. I'm gonna fast forward to this fight because we dumped the uh, half the spool for the shotgun. So this is that little like Islander squiddy combo. 
and it was the only bite we got on, on the shotgun for this day. The rest of the action for the entire day came off of the planer. What do we got? Bonita. Yep, that's what I said. It looks like a bonita. Well, it's all right. At least we got something. It's been, been a while since we had a bite, even. There he goes, big sea turtle. We're in 147 feet of water, heading back from Delray towards Boca. And we shot upon this little weed line. And we picked up right around the corner. Let's see what he's see what on here. I, I think it's another king. So we were in this pocket of blue water most of the morning in shallow and then dies out before Boca. And we uh, have had to fish this greener water a little bit here. I think it's another king. It's okay, we'll take it. Go ahead. No, no, keep, keep fighting. Hold, hold it and fight it. You, you got it? I gotta put, put this off. Right? You're gonna give him some slack though. I see it bouncing back. I'm gonna trim this line in front of you. A good king. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's okay. Keep going. Keep going. All right. 906. We're in 85 feet. And the planer just got hit. We are uh, just north of Boca Inlet here, getting closer to Del Rey. We, um, we came in closer to get away from the seaweed further out. Yeah, I, I see it back there, it's fish on for sure. And uh, we got blue water all the way here to the reef, so I'm gonna slow down a little bit. Yeah, just keep them right on plane like that. That's, that's called skiing them in. That's perfect. Go ahead, yeah. Yep, walk it. Pick it up and walk it back. Could be another king here, let's see. All right. Okay, I think you're gonna be over this other line here. Hey, Pop, uh, let's see. Yeah, pick it up and bring it all the way over. Bring it all the way over, and over this one too, up and over. Okay. And that's going back the other direction again. Control him, you got him. It's a big, yeah, I'm telling you, I think we might have hit like one of those, I told you we could pick up a grouper or a mutton from down there, go in the shallow. So we we're talking about five knots and I was telling my dad that we might have been pick up an awesome reef fish because of the depth that we're going here. Yes. It's like a mutton. It'll be great if it is, bring it over here. Hell yeah. Keep going. Fuck yeah, look at this fish. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Look how gorgeous that is. That is a mutton on the troll. Great keeper mutton. Woo! This is our eight sea turtle sighting this morning. Been everywhere, it's been awesome. Ninety feet off Boca here, Yamato. Planer just went off. Again, we're trolling shallow in this 
deeper blue water here. So it could be anything. It could be another, be another mutton snapper. It could be a grouper. We have no idea. We, it's, it's rare we get this like cobalt blue water here over this uh, last reef. So you don't really know what you're going to get into here. Usually this would be a king barracuda water, but no green water here today. I haven't seen it come up yet. Looks like it's on. All right, pull it out. Yep. Grab this behind you. Bring it down here. Oh yeah, it's on. You're on. Let's see what we got. Horsing it in. My dad's in his 60s and he. Oh, he's still on? I don't know. It hit that seaweed. I got the new one. Oh no, we lost it right there. On the seaweed. Ah ha ha. All right, bring it in. Let's. See the seaweed on it? Yeah, let's. Um, Let's get a fresh bait on it, get it, get it, get it back out. Our ninth sea turtle. Seen nine sea turtles before noon this morning. I think they're mating. I think there might be two of them here. Yeah, they're mating. There's two of them. Look at it. Yeah. They're mating. Sea turtles are getting busy. No wonder why we're seeing so many of them this morning. So, yeah, it's 11, 11 15. We've had a, a handful of bites. We lost, lost the last one. We're still in really nice blue water here and shallow, so we're you know 80 feet to 100 feet bouncing around looking for something to bite here. The um, everything deeper has just been full of weeds. We don't want to mess with it, so we found some blue water close enough and just trying to pick up a few bites and decide whether we uh, head in around lunch or if we do some bottom fishing or keep trolling. So we're gonna give this another like half an hour or so and see if we can get one or two more bites here. This, this could be awesome. Finally found some debris out here. Nice big long log. 400 feet of water so we'll troll it first and come back and see if there's anything sitting on it. I don't see anything sitting on there right now but it could be down lower. We trolled the log twice with nothing and then we got so close that we came back and now we're trying to see if there's something home here. We saw, caught a, we caught a jack on the first one and we thought we saw some color down below. So we're hoping that underneath here is something bigger than a jack. I can see more fish down there, Pop. You see them? So spoiler alert, there actually was never any mahi under here. We um, fished some deeper bucktail jigs. We dropped different, uh, different depths with uh, live pilchards and just couldn't get anything. And, you know, last year for me, if I found a piece of debris floating in 400 feet of water in the summer, it was it was game on, full of mahi. But this year, it's been tougher. There's been a lot of a lot of great debris and not a lot of fish under it. So this one just had jacks. And after pulling the whole spread in to come here, we didn't have the heart to redeploy the spread. So we uh, pulled it in and headed back home. Stick around for the cooking part of the video because I made the best mutton snapper recipe I've ever made in my entire life. So you guys are gonna enjoy that one. guys we are back in the inlet we uh to the half day it's been um been a long one out there we uh found that it was just pretty tough scattered weed everywhere went in shallower for a while i thought for the conditions we we did pretty good we went uh four for six on bites we had two kings a really nice mutton and a uh, bonita in the in the box we had one full bite off so 
um, something hit the line above the long shank hook on the planer, so we lost that whole lost that whole rig. But happens to me like maybe every couple of months or so. So it's it's been a couple of months. Probably was due for one of those. And um, yeah, we uh, the conditions changed a lot. We spent a lot of time like shallower with the blue water. Then that was gone. We went deeper, and green water was out to 300. And we um, did what we could try to find some fish, but over and all, I mean, for me, if had a lot of a lot of fun days on the water with with my dad it's pretty pretty special time fishing with your fishing with your dad out here so yep. that's been a lot of fun for me we never got him as well so he's gonna have to come back <laughs> go back out here next time we'll give it another shot um laura and i are shopping for a new boat this weekend so it might be a week or two before my uh, next videos are coming out because we're we're looking for a new boat so hopefully we uh, find something that we can go out here and raise some more fish on and keep the good times going thanks for watching as always guys and it's my wife, Laura. She's gonna be finishing up our uh, snapper here tonight with some fresh pico de gallo. Laura, what do you have going in there? So we have cilantro, some red onion, limes, lots of limes. These are tomatoes on the vine and garlic. So that's it, pretty simple. It's garlic, pretty simple. And we'll also use the limes to make some fresh margaritas. So uh, back to our roots, me being from Arizona when Laura and I were first dating over a decade ago. Going with a classic margarita, but it's a pretty clean one. So just 1800, a little Grand Marnier, Cointreau, and a whole lot of lime juice. We shake it up, and uh, we did a, a cayenne and salt pepper spice rim. And while I'm shaking it up here, I'm going to tell you why we're doing it. And it's because the base for our mutton snapper recipe tonight is going to be a marinade of tequila and lime. So these margaritas will complement it perfectly. So Laura does not like things quite as spicy. So a little less cayenne on the rim of her drink. And I'm gonna put a jalapeno spear into mine. I'm gonna top both of these off with a little more lime. I'm also gonna grill up some jalapenos to uh, have with the, uh, the snapper to you. So cheers, hope you guys enjoy. Ah, it's good. All right guys, so it's gonna be a really simple marinade tonight. And first I kinda wanna shove the filet, cause you can do this one of uh, two ways. So first of all, this is a beautiful mutt snapper filet. You can throw the whole thing on the grill. And this recipe could also go into the oven to be baked or broiled. And there is still this kinda, you know, backbone um, bloodline here so what you can do if you want to if you want no bones at all in the place you can just cut and make two fillets i did that with the other side but for this one we're gonna we're gonna throw it in because we're not making tacos we're gonna eat around it so we're gonna toss this in and we're gonna put just a little bit of olive oil olive oil kind of draws the flame in while it's on the grill and then i'm gonna put in a healthy amount of tequila so I'm from Arizona, I grew up on tequila, so I like the taste of tequila. If you don't want the stronger taste of tequila, use like a light Blanco tequila, not like a stronger 1800. And then, I'm gonna squeeze in a whole bunch of limes. I'll probably fast forward this part because squeezing in a bunch of limes takes, takes a minute. Four full limes later. All right, so we're gonna seal it up and give this a couple of healthy shakes. And then this will go into the fridge for an hour to marinate. And then I'll show you back here how we're gonna do the, uh, the rub. All right, so our fish has been marinating for an hour in the fridge in the uh, tequila lime with a little bit of olive oil marinade. So what we're gonna do now is kind of create the rub. And you can definitely create your own black and rub. And you could use the rub, you can do a cast iron skillet on the stove, you can broil it, you can bake it. We're gonna grill it because that's how my sweet wife prefers her fish to be cooked. But I'm gonna do two different seasonings here. So I'm gonna do this um, Everglades and a Cajun, but any kind of blackening seasoning that you guys have around will be more than sufficient. So I'm just gonna dump a bunch of both of these together here. And so my good friend Frazier got me this spice book. And the theory on the spice is the best dishes have something savory, which we have here, something spicy, which we have the cayenne for, something citrusy, that's the lime inside the marinade, and something sweet. So I'm just gonna do a little bit 
of uh, light brown sugar mixed in here. And although we're gonna press this in and rub it, I'm still gonna bring all three of these ingredients out and sprinkle on one more time while it's on the grill. Cause I'm gonna do one flesh side flip first. So, we're gonna grab this awesome filet and it has been cooked a little bit just by the lime while it was marinating there for an hour. And we're gonna put it on here and press it down. So you wanna make sure that those spices get pressed down into the flesh of the fish. So when you pop it back over, you've got a nice looking blackened rub on there. So we're gonna get these out to the grill. It's not gonna take long. And within the next three minutes, we'll be eating some delicious dinner. All right, welcome back guys. So this fish is ready to go onto the grill. Mutton snapper going on. This is blackened with a tequila lime marinade. What I'm gonna do, it's a little bit unorthodox. I'm gonna flip this and go skin down to start. We've got a couple little, little pieces here too. And the reason is that we're gonna get a little sear going on the flaky side of the fish. And then we'll flip it and cook 90% of it on the, uh, on the skin side. So um, mutton's uh, scales are just like crazy armor. So take it from a Guggen who tried to gaff one last year did not go well, so use a net. When you're getting a, when you're getting a mutton near the boat, uh, try to lead them in, um, face first into the net, pull them in, it's a lot safer, and then trying to force a gaff through those armory scales. And we are a um, couple of tequilas in, so we are pretty ready here for a delicious fish dinner. Come through and see how this looks here. That looks awesome. All right, Parker, he's ready for bed. No, I'm not. <laughs> All right, so um, now that it's flesh side back up, I am gonna sprinkle everything with a little more seasoning one more time. If you don't like your fish's season, skip this step. And again, just a little bit of the uh, brown sugar to add a little bit of the sweetness to it. So. Um, I was saying thank you to my friend Frazier who got me a seasoning book, but now that I'm thinking about it, if your friends are buying you books on how to cook or how to season, they might be sending you a message, so pay attention to those cues. We're going to give this uh, about two and a half minutes. We're going to pull it off and eat and see how it turns out. All right, it's been two minutes. See if this, I get it off in one shot or if I need the tongs. This looks amazing. Wow, look at that. So what we're gonna do is just take this, nice and simple, grab some pico de gallo and do the whole thing for right now. It's a lot of a lot of fish, but the nice thing about making the pico fresh is it's not cold, so all of this stays nice and warm. Let's grab a delicious bite of that. Flaky white fish, honestly, this mutt snapper does not get any better or any fresher. This is so good. If you wanted a little more season, you could add some, fit, some finishing salt, but this is delicious just the way it is. Hope you guys enjoy. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Tight lines.